uh, we at Ag Resource believe, at least at our research, that uh, with the milk markets already formed an annual and seasonal peak. And this kind of all occurred when the CCC and the U.S. government was supporting uh, the cheese market, the solids market, and we were pushing, of course, these farmers for families food boxes out the door. Now, they're still going out. Uh, we're going to have this occur for another few weeks. But when you think about it, now that we've got this, uh, this market that is now lacking this demand, we still have Congress uh, and, and the president fighting over the next coronavirus aid package. Those uh, programs are not in the forefront of the market. So I'm not sure whether or not they'll come back. That's a political decision. But losing this demand has caused the milk markets to retreat. My push to all of you in uh, the month of, of uh, June and July has been to look at hedging uh, October, uh, December milk <clears throat> above 17 and a half or 18 and a half dollars. I hope you all did that because as we look at the markets going forward, we think a major top has been formed and dairy prices will now be coming lower, assuming the government does not reignite that CCC or uh, Farmers for Families food box program. But if you were to ask me and say, Dan, where do you think the milk markets will be a year from now or next July? Uh, my response is going to be not undifferent from where we're sitting today in futures. 1620 to 1610 is what our modeling would show. So again, without a demand driver, without something here that would tell me that the all milk price needs to rise substantially back above 18 or 19, I believe we're going to have milk markets that are pretty flat as we think about the months to come.